Hey, I'm Jay and this is Plasma Channel. What you're about to see is entirely real. Repeating what you see in this video is only encouraged if you have experience with high voltages. The ability to levitate is pretty much limited to magicians and wizards. Most of us, well, we're not quite that skilled. Luckily, there's several fields of science that offer really great alternatives. In the past 200 years or so, we've discovered magnetic levitation, electromagnetic levitation, and uh, acoustic levitation. But there's a fourth kind that's a bit more exotic. It not only relies on a high voltage, but also what's called a quasi-stable electric field. This style uses electrostatics. A while back, I actually shot a video on this. Well, this time, I want to dig deeper. I want to know, since electricity can travel through anything conductive, including the human body, does that mean high voltage can give us the power to levitate? Only one way to find out. I learned about this process several years back, which is when I first shot a video on the topic. It completely blew me away, even if it did take several failures and a few headaches along the way. Since those humble times, I've one, gotten a way better camera, the one I'm shooting on right now, and two, wondered, does the top plate actually need to be a metal plate at all? Perhaps it can be replaced with a hand. You see, in theory, if you charge your body up to a high enough voltage, your hand should be able to act as a top plate. So I set out to test this. Naturally, the first step was to build a setup similar to last time with a 10 inch bottom plate, two five and a half inch acrylic supports, and an eight inch plate up top. However, this time the top plate can be removed. The top plate is connected to the output of my mini voltage multiplier and the bottom plate is connected to the ground of the multiplier. This is from a DIY video which I'll link in the description down below. Those who are familiar with this DIY build might notice that the power source has been upgraded. Now sitting between the two plates will be a piece of aluminum foil. The shape of the object is actually really important and I'll explain exactly why later. I plan on testing several variations in size just to see exactly what the limit is. It'll be so nice to film this on an actual camera. You see, last time I filmed it on this guy. This sorry beaten up heap of trash that met its plasma channel fate about two years ago. Let me know in the comments down below if you know how this thing met its fate. All right, if the plates are level enough, the foil should levitate all on its own. Easy. That went entirely differently in my head. What probably happened was too great a voltage was applied, so too much ionic wind was created, so it basically bounced up and down like a Franklin Bell experiment. So the solution is to turn down the voltage. It's really easy on voltage multipliers. You just clip lower on the ladder. Tossing the foil into place, you can see it takes a second, but that's a lot better. The foil is now in a state called quasi-stable levitation. Moving up in size and giving the larger foil a chance, you can see the stability is distinctively different. It sits lower due to more mass, and it kind of just wanders around. Moving on to the smallest object, it didn't need to be thrown into the static field, and it sits higher because it has less mass. This, this is why physics is a really great tool, because you can levitate small objects with no strings, just really intense electric fields. Now, before I replace the top plate with my handy dandy hand, I want to take this moment to explain what exactly you just saw. What you saw was a cool process called quasi-stable levitation, and it's dictated mostly by this interesting thing called Earnshaw's theorem. It's pretty straightforward. Think of this ball as a charged object, and this plate represents a charged environment with equilibrium in the middle surrounded by symmetrical charges around it. It can start in perfect equilibrium, but inevitably gets pulled to one side and falls out of equilibrium. Earnshaw's theorem states that a charged object like this ball can't be maintained in a stationary equilibrium solely by the interaction of the object's charge with the surrounding static charges. It can be temporarily stable or quasi-stable at best. The big boy question is why? Why doesn't it just stick to one plate or stay perfectly stable? Well, this is where the physics gets really, really cool. So the top plate is charged to about 70,000 volts positive, and the bottom plate is a relative zero volts, and the object to be levitated is conductive. That's the key. The object self-regulates. Due to strong negative charges in the top plate, electrons in the object are repelled downward towards the base. The sharp corners cause higher electric field gradients, causing electrons to escape due to corona discharge. 
When the foil goes too high, it loses charge through corona discharge, and when it goes too low, it builds up charge separation leading to attraction to the top plate. With the physics totally out of the way, I want to know now, what if you charge your body up to 70,000 volts or more? Will it give you the power to levitate small objects? Or will the irregularities in the shape of your hand cause problems? Uh, perhaps the fact that your hand emits a lot of moisture so charges can leak off into the air. Will that cause problems? There's only one way to tell. Now my whole body will be charged and I don't want to break my mic, so I'll be taking it off so I don't break it. As exciting as this will be, it's also going to be dangerous. So use the one hand rule at all times. So one hand in your pocket and that prevents electricity from going across your chest. Placing aluminum foil on a plastic stool, attaching a wire to the high voltage output, then connecting that wire to the foil that I'm going to stand on, I then went to work. Straight up, it was the craziest sensation you could imagine. Not only do you feel the ionic wind on your skin, but you can actually feel the foil tugging on the palm of your hand. So I'd call this a total success. Time to move on to the smaller foil and see how that performs. Now this blew me away. I had no idea this would happen. It kind of reminds me of quantum locking. Wherever my fingertip goes, the foil follows extremely closely and doesn't stray. Trying it on the larger foil, it still worked, just not as cleanly. Last up, I tried levitating the largest piece of foil, but I think it was a bit too heavy and couldn't get off the ground. Flight school's not for everybody. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. How close in proximity does that bottom plate need to be? Apparently, not that close. One more quick reminder about safety. Ooh. This is just so cool. This is proof that physics is basically the gateway to magic. Well, look, I had a lot of fun filming this video. Hopefully you learned something and I'd love to know your thoughts. So leave a comment down below. Also, if you'd like to encourage longer, more frequent videos, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. Patreons get early access to all of my videos and you get some small perks depending on member level. You stay classy, you classy cats.